you're about to watch Posting Day for Night, and I wanted to remind you that you can find more videos and content about producing and sharing great video at videomaker.com. To check it out, just click on the link in the description below. For more great content, go to videomaker.com. Four times the video. Articles, forums, reviews, and more. Videomaker.com. Day for night is a great technique that can take footage that looks like this and turn it into footage that looks like this. In this segment, we show you how to finish off the day for night look in post-production and how to fix some common issues with your footage. Let's get started. All right, so we're in Premiere here, and we've got this footage that we shot for our day for night shooting tutorial. Uh, just wanted to note real quick, uh, these shots were basically shot about two stops underexposed with 3200 white balance, so that's why we have a little more contrast than normal, and it's a little bit bluer than normal. Um, so let's finish that look with some post-production techniques. First thing I'm going to do is right-click, New Item, Adjustment Layer. If you don't have adjustment layers in whatever program you're working in, uh, you don't have to have one. This just makes it to where I can set the settings once. I don't have to copy paste onto each clip. So um, if you don't have that luxury, there's a lot of other ways to get this done, but uh, the settings should be the same. So next step, let's do a... I'm going to load the fast color corrector. So in your system, it might be hue saturation or something of that nature. But basically, all we're going to do with this is take the saturation down quite a bit. Uh, basically at night, you know, there's not as much color as there is during the day, so we're just basically pulling some of that out. So you can see in the greens here especially, um, if I go ahead and turn the fast color corrector off, you can see how bright and vibrant these greens are, and when I desaturate, it basically knocks them down, looks a little more nighttime-ish already. Okay, so that's all we're doing with fast color corrector. The next step is going to be to do some curves. So you can do this with a combination of levels and color correction, um, but I prefer to do it this way because the curves are kind of like a one-stop shot for everything we need to do here. So first thing, I'm going to move it to a shot with his face in it. Okay, first thing is we're going to bring our white levels way down, right? Because it's not that bright at night. So maybe even that far, and then maybe we can push up a little bit of those mid-tones to bring some of that back. So I'm just going to stick with that for right now. Um, you know, it's all to taste, of course. Um, and then the final thing we're going to do here is I'm going to take out some of the red, okay? And then I'm going to introduce some blue. Because for whatever reason, film uses blue for moonlight. I don't know if it's actually blue. I would argue that it's probably a little bit closer to black and white, but that's what our what we're used to, so that's what we're going to go with. All right. So let's see. Let's see a before and after here. So without RGB curves and with. Um, we can always make some fine-tuning adjustments later, um, but for now, I think we can move forward. So the next thing that we have to deal with is some sky issues. So even though we say don't shoot the sky, it's a little easier said than done sometimes. So we've got some in here, um, and then on our follow shot, um, we've got a little up here, right here. So there's a couple different ways to do it. Um, but in this case, we actually found that the simplest solution here was simply to scale our footage up. Now, I don't always like going up this high to 120, but because of the nature of this footage, it's at night, um, there's already like a lot of loss of detail here. Um, it doesn't bother me that it's scaled up. And then, of course, we're going to reposition it a little bit. Uh, so let's go 968 and maybe like a 424. Okay, so basically that got rid of those major sky areas that were really just kind of giving away the fact that maybe it was still daytime. Uh, I'll go ahead and copy that and paste it onto our other shot like that. And then we will go to this running behind shot. And let's see. Let's go 120. 
Okay, so basically it was upright in this area. So that looks pretty good. Okay, so let's scan through the rest of the footage here and just kind of see how we're doing. So that stuff looks pretty good. Uh, scrolling through. Okay, this shot, uh, we called it the treehouse shot because it literally was shot from a treehouse. Um, it looks a little darker than the rest of the shot, so I'm going to go ahead and just add a curves adjustment to the shot itself, not to the adjustment layer, because we just want to bump up this shot a little bit to match. Maybe around right there. Okay, that's better. And then this was not uh, an accident that he is actually, his feet are running the other way. Uh, we took the shot from this angle and basically there was a bunch of sky that we couldn't get rid of in the shot. So basically what we decided to do is flip it around, shoot the other direction, knowing that in post-production we would simply flip it. So let's do that. Okay. Boom. Magic. All right. So that looks good. And then this shot actually to me looks a little bit um, too bright comparatively. So we'll just add a curves adjustment to that one as well. And we'll go the opposite way and just bring it down a little bit. Okay. That's probably good. Okay. So we've got our treehouse shot. We've got the running shot and the barn shot. So we're on our way. And the last couple things I would do is there's still a little bit in some sections here, like right up here, where the sky is just peeking in a little bit. Not too bad, uh, but I'm kind of a fan of adding a vignette anyway. And in this case, it's going to double as just making the shot look a little cooler, but also maybe hiding a little bit more of those ones that are peeking through to the edges. So let's do it. Right click, new item, transparent video. Now, of course, there's a bunch of plugins that'll add a vignette for you. Uh, I happen to have those plugins, but uh, just in case you don't, we're going to demonstrate doing this a different way here. Okay, so we've got our transparent video. Now let's add a circle effect to our transparent video. Perfect. Not quite. Okay, so let's make our circle black and then let's invert it. And let's kick up our radius here quite a bit, maybe, maybe around there. Uh, and then what we can do uh, to get it positioned differently, let's uncheck uniform scale, and then let's scale that width out quite a bit. Because I want it to be a little heavier on top than the size, but that's probably good. Okay, and then we can take our opacity down a little bit, maybe to 75, and then we can take our feather up. That's probably good. So it's just, if I turn it off, you can see, especially in this top area right here is what I'm looking at. If I turn it off again, you can see it's just kind of closing that shot in a little bit um, and getting rid of any little remnants of sky that might pop through the top. Plus, I just kind of like the look of it anyway. So uh, it's, it's doing the double duty of looking cooler and also solving a couple uh, minor issues that we have. So after reviewing the footage, um, this is pretty good. The one last thing that kind of bothered us is we thought his face was a little bit dark here. Um, so we wanted to try to brighten that up. Now, um, to be truthful, the easiest way for me to do this is to go into After Effects, uh, draw a circle mask, and just track the shot. I actually tracked it manually because uh, there's so much movement here that trying to track it automatically didn't really work. Uh, but I just went frame by frame and loosely followed his face. Um, so I have that stuff here, and I'll kind of show you what that looks like. So this is that head one shot. And basically what I did is just followed along, and that way we can make adjustments to that face area without affecting the rest of the shot. But if you wanted to do it in Premiere, here is how you do it. Okay. Similar idea. Basically I would put a circle effect onto the shot. Go into Effect Controls. Let's do stencil alpha, and then let's reposition that circle over his head. Okay. Obviously, we're going to expand it a little bit, and then we're going to feather it, and then maybe bring it back in a little bit. Uh, and then basically what you can do is you can keyframe the center, and you don't necessarily have to do every frame. So um, a lot of times I'll go maybe 10 frames, reposition, and then go back through and do the in-between ones where they're necessary. 
Um, but this just gives you the idea of how you would follow along. I'm not going to go through every step of that right now. Um, I did do it in After Effects. So what I can do now is basically add this layer on top. So you can see, obviously, this is where it's going to be corrected. You can see where it fades in. What I do is I take the original settings here, paste them on. So this is basically what it looks like, you know, more or less originally. And actually, I'll probably move the vignette on top. Okay, and then I can just come back down here. And then rather than using the existing one, I can basically just start to uh, brighten that up a little bit. We're a little too far there. So we don't want to go too much, otherwise it's going to give us a weird halo effect. But maybe like even just right there. So let's see. Let's turn that layer off and on. And you can see in this head area here, it's definitely an improvement. Now we're going to have to walk the fine line between brightening it up and not making it too noticeable. Um, but, you know, if I play through there, it might be a little bit much, a little bit much. So if I bring it down a little bit, you know, again, we kind of have to walk that fine line between improving it without calling attention to it. Yeah, so I think that would work. Um, we could take a little more time to perfect that, but for demonstration purposes, I think you get the idea. So there's actually one final thing I'd like to show you, and let's duplicate this, okay? Uh, and that's fine. When we looked at our footage, it we pulled it off, right? We shot during the day, it looks like night, but one of the things that's sort of missing is a little bit of grain. So basically, you know, if we were to have really shot this stuff at night, we would have had to boost the ISO. There'd probably be a little bit of noise in there. So in the end, if we just go to effects and say um, noise, okay, and just add it on. Now what I've done here is I basically made this a pre-composition. So I've just brought the entire sequence that we worked on into a new one so that I can affect it all as one. Okay, so now I put some noise on. I'm going to turn this way up just to show you. Okay, so obviously that's more than we want, but we're going to uncheck use color noise and then we're going to uncheck clip result and then we're going to drag this way down because we're just adding just a bit. It might not translate very well um, online, but let me see if I can bring it up full. And that looks pretty good. So there's all this little detail in here that has a little bit of noise in it. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to just turn it up a little bit more for demonstration purposes and then turn it off and on and off and on. So you can see it's just adding that little bit of grain. It gives a little bit more realism. I definitely would probably be down in the more like the four to five range. Um, very subtle, but one final way to just kind of put that finishing touch. So, so there you have it. Take your footage that was shot with the intention of being turned from day to night, uh, add a few effects, and you've got some daytime footage that looks like nighttime.